So, you've learned some pretty disturbing information about the self-proclaimed Prophet of Islam, and you want to share this information with your nice Muslim friends, co-workers, and acquaintances. But you're worried that Muslims will become upset and irate if they hear you criticizing Muhammad. You don't want to drive Muslims away, but you believe that they need this information in order to make an informed decision about Muhammad and the Quran. What do you do? How do you share unpleasant facts with pleasant Muslims? This is one of the most common questions I get from viewers, and when I keep getting a question over and over again, it's probably time to make a video. Nathan recently commented, So I have a genuine question. I know there are those people who want to see Christians dead for trying to break their shackles. But there are also good friends of mine who are nowhere like these extremists, maybe because they try not to be. How do we talk to them in a tolerant manner while fully painting the corruptness of their belief? I love David's passion, but I'm not sure how I could talk to my friend about it with that same vigor. The confusion apparently arises in this way. David makes videos blasting Muhammad and the Quran, and it's massively effective. Muslims are leaving Islam left and right, and Muslim YouTubers are panicking and scrambling to respond to David's videos. So maybe I should use the same strategy with my Muslim friends. But I know that if I start mocking Muhammad like David does, they're going to get offended and stop talking to me. So do I do it anyway, or should I avoid talking about Muhammad? Let's clear this up, and I'll give you a simple, easy-to-follow strategy for sharing unpleasant facts with pleasant Muslims. I should point out here at the beginning that the way you see me talking in my videos is not the way I would talk to a Muslim co-worker or acquaintance. I might talk to a Muslim friend this way, but only after we become good friends and I know that the friendship is strong enough to endure plenty of mockery. I would also talk the way I talk in my videos to a Muslim who's being a jerk and running his mouth. But that's not the point of this video. The point of this video is sharing unpleasant facts about Muhammad with a pleasant Muslim. Let's compare two conversations. Hi, I'm a Muslim. So you believe in Muhammad? Yes, he is our beloved prophet. You're telling me that you believe in a man who had sex with a prepubescent girl and who married the wife of his own adopted son after causing the divorce by lusting after her and who told his followers that they could beat their wives into submission and hire prostitutes and rape their female captives and slave girls and who tortured a man for money and who beheaded hundreds of Jews and who sucked on the tongues of little boys and who walked around covered in semen? That's the prophet you believe in! What went wrong here? The problem is in thinking that there are only two ways to go about this. Either you don't criticize Muhammad at all, or you dial it up to 10 and start blasting. That's absurd. I talk this way on YouTube because this is a very effective way to do things on YouTube. It's called infotainment. But if you're having a conversation with a nice Muslim, there are much, much more effective ways of getting the same information across. Now for the second conversation. Hi, I'm a Muslim. Oh yeah? This is awesome. I've seen some things about Islam on YouTube and in the news, but it's cool to talk directly to a Muslim. Could you tell me what you believe? We believe that God is one and that he delivered his final revelation through the prophet Muhammad. Yeah, I've heard some things about Muhammad, too, but I'm glad you're here so I can get a Muslim's view. What do you believe about Muhammad? Oh, he was the greatest man ever. He was a mercy to all mankind. He's the perfect example for us when it comes to how we should live. Well, it's interesting to hear your perspective, but there are some people who disagree. If it's possible, I'd actually like to get both sides. Could we sit down sometime and you could give me your best case for Muhammad, and then we could go through some of the claims of people who don't believe in Muhammad, and you could tell me why you disagree with those people? Of course! I would love that! Do you see the difference between the two conversations? 
In the first conversation, the critic was trying to overwhelm a Muslim that he knows nothing about. He had no interest in the Muslim's position, and the Muslim had no reason to think that this person was interested in a serious discussion at all. Why would a Muslim want to continue that conversation? In the second conversation, the critic showed interest in the Muslim's views. He was happy to let the Muslim speak and explain his position. He asked if the Muslim was willing to have a conversation about Muhammad that would involve criticism, and he allowed the Muslim to decide if they were going to continue. If your goal is to get unpleasant facts about Muhammad into the mind of a pleasant Muslim, which of those two approaches do you think would be most effective in helping you? Reach your goal. Using the latter approach, you can even bring up extremely sensitive information in a non-threatening, non-offensive way. Imagine our two friends at their meeting where they're discussing Muhammad. So, for all of these reasons and many more that we haven't even covered, Muhammad is clearly the greatest man in history. I now rest my airtight case. Well, I thank you for sharing all of this information with me. Again, it's good to hear about Islam directly from a Muslim. But as I mentioned last time, there are people who study Islam and disagree with you. I'd like to discuss these issues with a Muslim, but I know that Muhammad is very special to Muslims, so I'm wondering how to discuss these things without upsetting you. What? You don't have to worry about upsetting me. Go ahead and share your concerns. Oh, awesome! I've really been wanting to discuss Muhammad, but I wasn't sure how to go about it. So, thank you for sitting here with me. I think the easiest way to do this would be to watch a video that raises some issues. The guy who makes the videos is a jerk, but he puts the sources up on the screen. So maybe we could watch a video and pause on the sources and read them. And after that, there's no rush. If you want to go look them up on your own or talk to your imam and give me a response next time, that would be great. Does that work? Of course. Let's watch the video. I'd be happy to share my thoughts. Wonderful. Here's a video by David Wood. Notice now you're getting all of the same criticisms across to the Muslim, but instead of presenting them as an attack that's meant to overwhelm and silence and embarrass him. You're offering them to him and asking him to respond. It's not an attack; it's an invitation to him to share his thoughts. It's a request for more information about his religion. Now, this obviously wouldn't have to involve watching one of my videos. I used that as an example because I said that this approach would work with extremely sensitive information. You could always read through an article with the Muslim. You could go directly to his sources with him. There are plenty of ways to go about this. But as you go through the criticisms, and you and your Muslim friend are taking notes, he's learning things about his prophet that he's never heard before. Since he's agreed to respond to these criticisms, he's going to have to think about them. He'll probably go and look up Muslim responses to the criticisms. The result is that the information you wanted to get into his head is now in his head, much more so than if the conversation had ended after a single rant. And if he comes back with some defense of Muhammad, I probably wouldn't press very hard at first. I'd thank him for taking the time to get back to me. But a few days later, I would have another question for him. Hey. Thanks again for sharing your thoughts about Muhammad and Aisha. Would you be able to answer another question for me? And so on, and so on, until your Muslim friend knows all of the unpleasant facts about Muhammad that he would never in a million years hear from his imam. So different strategies work best in different contexts. What works well on a YouTube channel doesn't necessarily work well in one-on-one -on -one discussions. If you follow the approach I've given here, I guarantee that you can get a lot of embarrassing facts across to a lot of Muslims much more effectively than you could if you came out blasting. Test the strategy and let me know how things go.